want to welcome everybody this evening that's come out to Times Square Church to pray and to fast and to believe God for the victory in people's lives all over the world. We've had this prayer meeting ongoing now online worldwide for six weeks. And in in that time, there's been over 11,000 prayer requests come in from 101 countries. Thank God. I personally believe that we are on the threshold of the return of Jesus Christ. No man knows the day or the hour. But the Bible says that we are not children of darkness, that that day should overtake us as a thief. In other words, there's something in the heart. Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 25, that there's something inside of those who know God that causes us to say, behold the bridegroom, go you out to meet him. And for those that are joining us online live this evening from all around the world, I want you to behold the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. And go out to meet him. Go out of wherever you are. Go out of whatever holds you. Because he's willing to embrace you. He's willing to set you free. He's willing to save you from the penalty of the wrong that you have done. He's willing to give you new life. And he's willing to call you by his name. He's willing to prepare a place where he dwells called heaven for you for all of eternity. So all you have to do tonight is open your heart and come to him. He calls to you as much as you call to him tonight. Jesus loves you with an incredible passion. It's the reason he came to the earth and walked among us for 33 years as a man. And then he went to a cross and suffered horrific hardship and death on that cross to pay the price for the wrong things that you and I have done. So that trusting in him, we might be forgiven by God. And that God himself could come and live with us and live inside of us. And give us a new birth and a new life. That's what the Bible promises. That's what the cross of Jesus Christ is all about. A new life. A full life here on this earth. And in eternity, once we die, we go to live with God for all of eternity. That is the promise of the text of scripture. That's the promise that Jesus made to us. When he came to this earth 2,000 years ago. Thank God. Many, many people are getting answers to prayer. I want to read to the, a few of them to you. Bridgewater, New Jersey, since our last prayer meeting, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. I've had two interviews, and he opens a door that no man can shut. Thank God for that. From Marlboro, New Jersey, praise God, I have no need of surgery on my left ear. God is good. From Virginia, my daughter was having issues with her heart and trouble breathing. This past week, she has been feeling good for the first time in months. From Hyperabad, India, my prayer request for my relationship, prayers have been answered. I can clearly see the hand of God on me. God bless you in India. Thank God for you. From Bradford in the UK, I give thanks for answered prayer. By his stripes, I have been healed. The cross of Calvary stands for victory. From Brooklyn, my relationship with my roommate was in trouble. I cried out to the Lord and he answered. Both of us went to jail for fighting, but now we are friends. Hallelujah. From New York City. Abu had a paralyzed hand seized into a fist due to dialysis complications and infection. He was awaiting an operation, but his hand opened. The doctor says it is a miracle. Saddle River, New Jersey. I've been praying for a job for myself and all who need one. God gave me the best position I've ever had in my career. I am so thankful. Bronx, New York. Praise God. He has set me free from fear and social anxiety. Remember, we prayed for that a couple of weeks ago. After the altar call Sunday and prayer meeting on Tuesday, I have been set free. (laughs) 
from Corning, New York. Eight-year-old Dominic went home from the hospital. No need for dialysis or a kidney transplant. Thank you for praying. Thank you, God. (laughs) Oklahoma, great is our God. Great is our God, exclamation point. He answered prayers to provide rent and a great home. Praise Jesus continuously in Jesus' name. Jersey City, Susie with cancer was frustrated that she couldn't get Obamacare. Now she's on treatments even without insurance. Romans 8.28, all things work together for good. Last night, I asked for prayer for the Walker family. My cousin Terry prayed with me today and asked Jesus to come into his heart and save him. God is answering very quickly. When people are asking for uh, relatives and family members and jobs and healing, it's amazing. Generally speaking, it's the next day or the next week they're getting the answer to their prayers. Montana, you prayed for my father, Ted, three weeks ago. He was bound. After two days at the hospital, or he was bed bound, I'm sorry. After two days at the hospital, he walked to my car. Praise Jesus. Amazing. Just amazing. I went forward for prayer in church on Sunday, on the 23rd of March. The sermon was about God opening and closing doors. As of today, I have two job offers. Bless God. Long Island, New York. I prayed for fellowship close to home, a Bible study to gather and pray. I was reunited with two friends from high school who I haven't seen since 15 years ago who are saved. Praise God. They're right near her home. Thank God. And last, again from Jersey City, New Jersey, the two Ethiopian girls, Angie and Anna, that you prayed for for jobs, got employed last week after being jobless for almost a full year. Praise God. I want to bring to your attention just a portion of scripture before we pray and go back to worship. It's about two men called Paul and Silas. Men given for God, for his glory and for the sake of other people. And there was a season in their life where they were thrown into prison for what they believed. And the Bible actually says they were put into the inner prison. That means the the darkest, the most hopeless cases were in that place. And not only were they put in there, they were beaten before they were put in there and their their feet were chained together so they couldn't move. And the scripture says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. And everyone in the prison heard them. Thank God we're going to pray tonight. We're going to sing praises no matter what we're going through, no matter what our difficulty And I want to encourage those that are listening online tonight, no matter what your circumstance is tonight, you pray for somebody else. You see one of those blue banners come up on the bottom of your screen. You pray for somebody else tonight and you watch what God's going to do for you. Paul and Silas were not praying for themselves. I know they were praying for others because suddenly the scripture says there was a great earthquake. The foundations of the prison were shaken. That means the places where these people were held in captivity. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains, everyone's bands, it says were loose. That means their chains fell off, just like my watch just fell off right now. (laughs) Praise God. They prayed. When they prayed, the place where people were held captive was shaken. People are held captive all over the world now. The devil thinks he's sewn up this generation in his back pocket. But I've got news for darkness. Jesus Christ is still alive. Jesus Christ is at the right hand of power. And we're going to pray tonight. And everybody with us tonight. I don't know how many are online, but I know that from 101 countries, people are sending in prayer requests consistently now. And I want you to pray. We're going to pray that this this whole system of evil that's captivating people be shaken tonight. That prison doors begin to open. And when Paul and Silas prayed, their prison door opened as well. And their shackles came off. And they were brought into a place of victory and healing as well. And so we're going to pray and we're going to believe God tonight for victory. 
We didn't come here just to moan and groan at the throne of God. We came here to agree with God that his son died. And when he rose from the dead, he took death and hell and the power of sin captive and gave gifts unto men. The apostle Paul says that in Christ we are seated at the right hand of God. And elsewhere he says, in him we are more than conquerors. We have already won the victory before we even go into the battle. And so, Father, tonight, in Jesus' name, as we choose to pray in this house, as we choose to praise God in this house, not only here but on the Internet, no matter what our own battles are, we make the choice to declare you to be God. We make the choice to declare you to be faithful. We make the choice to say that everything that you allow in our lives works together for a good even when we don't fully understand it. We make the choice to pray for others tonight and praise you for being God. And we ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name, shake every prison place. Shake every place of bondage. Shake every place of captivity. And let there be a glorious shout of victory tonight all over the world. Let the glory of God be sung tonight. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory to the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for this and we praise you for it with all of our heart. Let's give him a shout of victory in this house before we even pray tonight. Tonight, you can be seated just for a moment. I just want to read a couple of uh, prayer requests to you. We want to pray, take a moment and pray for marriages tonight. We've had so many folks that have written in uh, about their marriage, needing prayer, needing a miracle. Uh, Here's one. Uh, My wife filed for divorce, gave me the papers. I signed them. I pray God's will be done, and I pray for reconciliation. Uh, Amen. Uh, Here's another one that said, uh, please pray, which Pastor read a little bit earlier, uh, from Detroit area. Uh, Please pray for our marriage. My wife said she had no hope for our marriage last week. We're 12 days from our first anniversary. And so they're believing God for a miracle. Here's one from Orlando, Florida. My friend, a new Christian, uh, is having major problems with uh, her husband, verbal abuse, alcoholism. Uh, They have no money for doctors and need deliverance. Uh, Here's another one, uh, New York, New York. For my marriage, unresolved anger. uh, For my husband to have income to pay his debt. I am so tired, I don't know how to speak to him anymore. Uh, Here's another one from New York. Please pray for supernatural forgiveness uh, between myself and my spouse. Uh, uh, They are unbelievers. Uh, There is much pain and anger. Thank you. Uh, Here's one from Savannah, Georgia. I am a pastor. Church is growing. Church is praying. My wife wants to leave me. I am so afraid. We fight a lot. I feel like a failure. We're going to believe God for a miracle tonight for this particular couple. Here's one from Kansas City. Uh, My sister has five kids and two adopted kids. Uh, Her husband is divorcing her and trying to hurt her in every way financially possible. Uh, They need a miracle. Here's one from Toronto, Canada. My marriage is under attack after 33 years together. Uh, Please pray for marriages. Christian marriages are under attack. God bless you. Folks, we're going to believe God for miracles tonight. I say we're going to believe God for miracles. He's able to restore relationships. He's able to restore the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locust had eaten. God is a restorer of relationships. Uh, I, I want to share with you, this is not a marriage uh, testimony, but it's a, a testimony of relationships being restored. Uh, I grew up in a home under my dad's authority, and I was a rebel to the core uh, in the house. And my dad and I, we fought all the time. I wasn't a Christian at the time, uh, but we fought constantly. I had a foul mouth, no respect, full of anger and hurt and rejection in my heart, lashing out. I would bottle things up and then it explode, you know, when someone would finally come and push that button. But then when I came to Jesus, hallelujah, when I came to Jesus, 
Praise God. He told me to humble yourself and to ask for forgiveness. And I came to my dad one day and, and I came before him and I asked him to please forgive me for all the years of grief and pain that I had caused him. And my dad, I want you to know, and I are best friends today. Praise the Lord. God is a restorer. God is a healer. He can heal relationships. We're going to stand. I want you to stand with me tonight. We're going to believe God for miracles. I want you to right now, if you would turn around into groups of twos and threes and fours, and let's begin to pray for healing of relationships. We're going to pray for healing of marriages tonight. We're going to believe God to work miracles in all these homes tonight. Would you begin to lift up your voice? Let's begin to claim the promises of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight that we can lift our voices to you. You are indeed a God who is able to restore. You are the one that restores, Lord, relationships. You heal homes. You heal marriages. Father, I thank you tonight. Lord, you promised in your word in Hebrews chapter 8 as a covenant-keeping God that you would be our God and that we would be your people. You promised that you would fight our battles for us. You said, is anything too hard for the Lord? Tonight we believe that there is nothing too hard for the Lord. God, you are on the throne and you are able, oh God. Lord, I pray for marriages tonight. I pray for homes, Lord, that are under attack, marriages that are under attack. God, in Jesus' name. Lord God, that you would come and you would bring healing to hearts. Lord, where there has been wounding. God, where there has been pain. Where there has been words spoken, oh God. Words that have been spoken that have cut deep. Oh God, we're asking that you will come and you'll begin to heal those wounds. I pray for husband and wives to humble themselves before you. Lord, your word says in Proverbs that only by pride cometh contention. I pray, oh God, that you will cause husbands and wives to humble themselves and to release the pride. God, only you can do this. Only you can change, Lord, the heart. Lord, only you can change the hearts. But Lord, in your word, in the new covenant promises of your word, you said you would come and you would take out that stony heart, that hard heart, the rebellious heart, and you would give us tender hearts of flesh, hearts that are tender towards you, hearts that are tender towards one another. Oh God, I pray for a fresh baptism of love to come into the hearts of your people, to come into the hearts of those that are crying out. I pray for husbands, Lord, to begin to love their wives once again as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Oh God, in Jesus' name, I'm praying for wives, oh God, that they would humble themselves and respect and honor their husbands. Lord Jesus, I pray, oh God, that you will bring healing to hearts and homes, healing to marriages. We stand against every attack of hell. We stand against every lie of the enemy. Lord, we stand against every spirit of discouragement. Lord, every spirit of discouragement, oh God. We stand against the spirit of fear, oh God. Lord, those that are afraid to give their marriages another chance to surrender their marriages to you. Oh God, because they've been disappointed so many times. God, we're believing you to drive out that spirit of fear. Your word says you haven't given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. God, tonight, drive out that spirit of fear, oh God. And I pray for peace that passes all understanding to guard the hearts and minds of your people in Christ Jesus. God, glorify your name. Heal the marriages. I pray for this marriage that's been under attack after 33 years. Oh God of healthy marriage, God, that you'll bring healing. Healing in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, oh God, Lord, for that husband, Lord Jesus, that husband who is divorcing his wife. God, they have seven kids. God, I pray you'll humble him, oh God, and help him to turn to you and yield to you, oh God. Father, I pray for this pastor, oh God, whose ministry seems to be flourishing, but his home is falling apart. God, in Jesus' name, we pray, we fight for our brothers and sisters tonight. We hold up his arms, oh God, and we pray, oh God, that you would grant success in their home and in their marriage. God, whatever it takes, bring them together, oh God. Push back the forces of darkness and hell, oh God, and in Jesus' name, bring victory. We're believing you for victory. We're believing you for healing. 
God, we're believing you for freedom. We're believing you for a shout. We're believing you, Lord God, that husbands will love their wives and begin to romance their wives, oh God, and treat their wives as you treat the church, oh God. God, we pray against the spirit of anger. Oh God, that you'll cause a release to come in that spirit of anger. Oh God, that folks will release grievances. We pray for your love to begin to flood the hearts. Lord, to begin to flood the hearts of couples once again. Once again, oh God, in the name of Jesus. You said, is anything too hard for the Lord? We believe, God, there is nothing too difficult for you. We believe, oh God, that there is nothing too difficult for you, oh God. Underneath us are everlasting arms. Father, we just thank you tonight. Lord, we bless you tonight for what you're going to do. Lord, we're looking forward to the reports. We're looking forward to the testimonies. God, and we'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Folks, come on, let's begin to praise him. Let's begin to give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. We shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We believe that our God reigns. We believe that our God reigns. We believe that the devil is defeated and our God is exalted. We believe for a fresh baptism of love, a fresh baptism of humility. Lord, a fresh baptism, oh God, of the laying down of our own rights. Lord, as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, that husbands will love their wives and that wives will respect and honor their husbands. Father, we thank you, oh God, that no weapon formed against them can prosper. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated for a moment. There are so many people who are writing in on a regular basis for salvation. Many people are writing in for personal salvation, and they're acknowledging that they have a great need. Many people are coming in and saying, I need to be saved in order to prepare my family for the kind of life that they deserve. Many are saying that I'm at the end of my rope. If God doesn't come in immediately and save me, I have absolutely no hope. We're hearing of people who are saying, I need to be healed and I need financial um, help and I need physical and emotional help, but they're also saying, but first and foremost, I need to be saved. I need my life to be changed. I just want to read one or two um, statements. One, pray for the salvation of my son, Michael Robert Hernandez, that he might be touched by the Lord's love and believe. We have so many people who are asking that the Lord might come in and bring a kind of life, a kind of health, a kind of hope that they know based on their experiences that only God can do. So what we want to do is we want to pray that men and women might be saved because we are grateful for all of the other things that God is doing, but we're seeing more and more people writing in from Hong Kong. We had one person write in from, we had another person write in from Saudi Arabia asking that the Lord save them, that the Lord teach them. And oftentimes, would God come in and teach my community what it means to be saved? We want to see salvation in our land or in our world or in our part of the world. So I'm going to ask Derek Griffin, one of the leaders here at Times Square Church, to come in and to pray. And I'm going to ask any person who's online who's been saying, God, I need to be saved. I'm at the end of my rope. I can't do this alone. I can't help myself. I need to know Jesus. I need to know what it is to live for Jesus. It's not enough for me to try and do this in my own strength. Not enough for me to try and get religious I want to know God. I need my life changed. We're going to pray with you, and we're going to pray for you, and we're going to believe God for a great miracle tonight. In Jesus' name. 
Glory to God. Father, we thank you tonight. God, we thank you tonight, God, that our cries don't go on deaf ears. Lord, we know that you're here with us tonight. Lord, and we know it's your heart's desire, God, that men and women might be saved tonight. Lord, you said it in your word, God, that you sent your only son. That whosoever shall believe would not perish but have everlasting life. Lord, I pray for every husband, God. God, every husband that has a praying wife, Lord God. Lord, I'm asking that you would meet him. Lord, that you would speak to him, that you would save him. God, I pray for every son. God, every daughter, God, every wife, every brother, God, every uncle, every sister, every mother. God, I'm asking for every cousin, for every aunt tonight, Lord God. Lord, that you would send the Holy Ghost, Lord God, and that you would save to the uttermost, Lord God. Lord, I know that it's your heart's desire, God, to save. Lord, I remember when you met me, God. God, I was full of addiction, God. God, I was out of my mind, oh God. God, I was chasing after things that didn't make no sense, God. But you found me, Lord. Lord, you pursued after me, God. Lord, you cornered me, God. God, and you saved me, God. Lord, and you raised me up to be a man of God. And I'm asking God that you would do it once again, God. God, do it once again, God. God, I pray for my own children tonight. Lord, and I pray, God, for every parent that is here. God, that you would cause them never to give up, Lord God. God, I'm asking that you would give us souls tonight. God, I'm asking God. Lord, we won't stop, God, until you give us souls tonight. Lord, I pray, God, tonight, Lord, that you would give us souls, God. Give us souls, God. God, give us heart, God, to speak to the young people today. God, give us the courage, God, to go to the byways, Lord, to the highways. God, give us souls, God. Give us souls, God. Lord, we won't let you go tonight, God. We won't let you go. Lord, I need my children, God. Lord, I need my children now, Lord. God, give me their souls tonight, Lord. Lord, you promised them to me, God. And I'm asking once again, God, that you would give them to me now, Lord. Now, Father, send the Holy Ghost. Send the Holy Ghost. Send the Holy Ghost. Send the Holy Ghost. Ghost. And Father, we thank you tonight, God. We thank you, God. That when we cry out to you, God, Lord, you said it, God, that if we be an earthly fathers, God, know how to give good gifts to our own children. How much more would the heavenly father send the Holy Ghost to those that ask? Send them, God. Send them, God. Send them, God. Send them, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you. Maybe seated again. I'm going to share with you for a couple moments just thoughts on faith and prayer. And we're going to believe God tonight for victory. I don't say that lightly. For the Lord is doing something in this generation. I have no doubt in my heart whatsoever that this meeting is called of God. This was not our idea. It was his idea. And perhaps for the first time that I've ever heard of, at least, we are praying together with people from all over the world. It's truly amazing to know that I'm praying with brothers and sisters in Christ and brothers and sisters who want to be in Christ in Saudi Arabia, India, China, Israel, numerous nations around the world. It's amazing that, and and states all over the United States of America and, and provinces in Canada, that we are together praying tonight for one last, perhaps even the final, ingathering of people into the kingdom of God before Christ comes. Remember that the Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, now he has come in like a flood. There's a flood of filth that has been poured out on this generation. A flood of confused thinking in our schools and our children. A a flood of, of requirements and limitations being placed on the church of Jesus Christ. Just a flood of immorality on the airwaves. And it's, it's come in like a flood to destroy the heritage of God, the testimony of Christ and the people of God. But the Bible says that when that happens, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. God will call his people one more time, and God will be God to his people one more time. We are not called to just simply be an argument against all of these false theologies of 
of reality and truth, but we are called to be an, a living expression of who God is in our generation. I was so stirred this morning. I was reading in the scriptures in the book of Joshua in the Old Testament about a season where God was taking his own people into a place that he had promised them. Now, this is a physical type of something spiritual in our time. As much as they were promised a physical land called Israel, we are promised salvation, freedom, and an abundant life through Jesus Christ. That is our promised land. Christ is our promised land. And Joshua was leading the people of God of that time into this place of promise. And as he was leading the people into this place of promise, listen to these words from Joshua chapter 10, verses 12 to 14. As Joshua prayed in the middle of the battle. They were fighting to occupy this land. Now everything in that land was resisting them coming in. Just as in every generation, godlessness will resist the advance of the kingdom of God. But I thank God the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. They're mighty through God to the pulling down, the tearing down of strongholds and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Oh, thank God for that knowledge. Thank God. I'm tired of reading about Gideon. It's, I like reading it. But I'm tired of just reading about it. I want to live it in this generation. Well, one more time, one more time for the glory of the name of Jesus Christ. One more time for the excitement that has to be in the heart of God. One more time, another people, another place, another time. Press in to obtain everything that is ours in Christ Jesus. Now listen to what Joshua prayed as they're fighting that which is resisting them. Then spoke Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of all Israel, Sun, stand still upon Gibeon. And moon, stop basically in the valley of Ajalon. Now, you and I would look at such a man today and say, Wow, that's quite a prayer. He's asking God to suspend the motion of the universe. You don't just stop the sun. You have to stop everything. You understand? Everything stops. Everything has to be suspended. The law of gravity has to be suspended. It's amazing when you begin to look at it. And so what's God's response? And the sun stood still. And the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and did not go down for a whole day. Amazing. And there was no day like that before or after it that the Lord hearkened to the voice of a man for the Lord fought for Israel. Now here's the point. Not only do we see the power of God in this, but what I see in this story is the intense desire of God to have his people inherit that which he has laid up in store for them. There is something in God's heart He wants us to be free more than we want to be free. He wants us to know who he is more than we can even conjure up in our hearts a desire to know him. It was in his heart. He initiated this relationship. He caused this world not to be destroyed. He came to this world as a man 2,000 years ago. He walked among us. He went to a cross. He was bruised and beaten that we might be reconciled to God. And he did it because he wants us to inherit everything that he has for us in his son, Jesus Christ. It's in God's heart for us to be free before it's in ours. You see, so we're not praying to a reluctant God tonight. And many people have a wrong idea about God. They think that we're, we come to God and we, we pray and he just sits there with his arms folded, taps his foot and says, well, if you, if you get the right phraseology, I might consider it. That's the way some people pray. We don't understand that there's a passion in the heart of God for your freedom. There's a passion in his heart for your family, a passion for your healing, a passion for your sanity, a passion for your children that are cutting themselves, a passion for the testimony that he's willing to give us to be established in us. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. In Mark chapter 1, a leper presses through the crowd 
and falls at the feet of Jesus. Now, this is a, this is a, a, a disease, an unstoppable disease at that time of death and decay. And when I look at many of these prayer requests tonight, I see an unstoppable disease of death and decay has gotten a hold of people's minds, their homes, their families, their financial situations, everything that is represented here. And this leopard fell at the feet of Jesus and said, if you want to, you can heal me. Jesus, without hesitation, looks at him and touches him and says, I want to. And and folks, it's so it's so powerful because there's a law of death and decay going on here. And basically, this man says, if you want to, you can stop it. And Jesus technically says, I want to and reaches out and stops it. It's amazing. You, you look through the scriptures, you'll see time and again, he'll stop the whole religious parade because somebody somewhere is crying out to him. And he's never offended by our cry. And he's never drawing back and saying, well, if you meet these seven conditions, then I'll consider doing it for you. The leper had no time to meet any conditions. His body was wasting away. His future was gone. His family had shunned him. His community was ostracizing him. And so all he had left was to fall at the feet of Jesus and said, Lord, if you want to, you can heal me. And immediately a hand touched him and said, I want to. The Lord stepped into the midst of the synagogue in his day. And it was his turn to read the scriptures. And he asked for the book of Isaiah. And he opened to the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. In other words, he's saying, this is why my father has sent me to this world. This is the reason. This is what he's saying. This is the reason I've come to you. This is the reason I stand here. This is the reason I'm going to go to a cross. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. In other words, he's anointed me to tell those who have no money, no resources, they have no claim to fame, they have no history of being successful, they feel ashamed about who they are, to tell you that I've come to set you free, and I've come for you because I love you. I've come to preach the gospel, the full counsel of God, to those that know they are poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach freedom or deliverance to the captives, And the recovering of sight to the blind, to those who don't see a way out of their situation. He said, I've come to give you light and show you a path. And it's not just a path where you survive. It's a path where you thrive. It's a path of joy. It's a path where I'm going to give you a voice. And there's a song on this path. And there's a reason to live on this path. And there's the presence of God will be in your life on this path. And to set free those that have been bruised. I see so many prayer requests coming in for those that have been molested, those that have been let down, those that have been wounded by words, those that have been abandoned by family and people they once trusted. And they're in a place of such deep captivity, they never know, they'll never know if they can be healed. But he said, I've come to set you free. If you have woundings in your life so deep, you don't know how you're ever going to get out. And there comes a point where you and I have to begin to realize that God wants to do this. He is the initiator of it. It's not you and I are not initiating this. He initiated it. All he requires of us is a willingness to get up and fight for what is ours. That we simply are not willing to go down in unbelief and listen to the lies any longer. There's got to be something in you and something in me that stands up and says, sun stand still and moon stop over there. Let everything stop right now because I'm meeting with God and God is going to give me the victory. And it's a type of those who say that the the drunkenness that's been in my family for five generations, stop right where you are. And the pain that has been afflicted in my heart and those hearts that have come before me and the pain that I've even inflicted in my own family, stop where you are. God is going to give me the victory and he's going to give it to me now. Because I have a promise of life in Jesus Christ. He said, you shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. 
He said, I've come to give you life and I've come to give it to you more abundantly. So enough of this. I'm going in to the promise inheritance that is mine in Jesus Christ. I'm going in to get what is mine. And so listen to me, those that are online tonight. You can't just sit back and wait for somebody else to do the praying for you. You've got to at some point in your life get up and say, I'm, I'm going to take what is mine. I have an inheritance. And I'm no stronger than the leper, but he got healed, so I'm going to get healed too tonight. The scripture says that the eyes of everybody in the synagogue were fastened on him. They had heard words that that were there. They were plainly declared in the scriptures, but somehow they just got buried in the volumes of religion that were propagated on the people of that day. Just the constant speaking without power that was going on in the house of God had buried the truth that he had just unlocked one more time and revealed to the people. And it says all the eyes were fastened on him. Suddenly, Jesus was the center of of attention. Suddenly, in a world that is bankrupt, suddenly, in a church age that has just been buried under mountains of good speaking that doesn't really give clear revelation of who God is, Suddenly, the eyes of the people are fixed on Jesus again. And that's the greatest cry that should be in each one of our hearts in this time in which we're living. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. In other words, you don't have to wait till tomorrow, Joshua. This day. This day you can have the victory. This day can be the day, the change, break in your life. This day, your prison door can open. This day, your wounded heart can be healed. This day, I'm going to begin to speak to your sons and daughters, and no matter where they are, they're going to get up and start to come home. This day, this day, this day, this day, I'm going to restore these marriages. Even if the divorce papers have been already signed, God can change a heart. This day, but you have to fight. Listen to me tonight. Get up and fight for your families. Fight for your homes. Fight for your children. When Nehemiah was rebuilding the wall in the Old Testament, he told the nobles and the people of that generation, you got to get up and fight for your families. Fight for your future. Fight for your sons and daughters. You fight it though on the ground of faith. You say, I can't do this, but I know somebody who already has, and he has promised me victory. The victory is mine. I am turning to Jesus Christ. And all this, all these enemies that have come in and devouring my home, my family, my sanity, my future, my strength, all these things, I stand against them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe the victory is mine. God Almighty, the victory is mine. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. And I challenge you tonight, stand up and fight. You've got to fight. You can't just lay down and expect somebody else to do it for you. It's your voice that has to call out to God. Nobody called out for the blind man. Nobody spoke up for the leper. you got to speak yourself, no matter where you are. prayer request coming in. I've been extremely depressed. I have no energy to do anything. I have major problems to resolve and I need a new job. Here's another one from California. The Lord delivered me from drunkenness through WW Pray a month ago. Pray with me to find a Bible teaching in a Christ following church. God bless you. It's been a month. You've been sober for a month. Thank God you got the victory. These are all Prayer requests in line with what Jesus spoke when he stood in the temple. Pray that I would forgive my mother supernaturally for abandoning me. I've came to heal those that have been bruised in heart. From New Jersey, pray for the end of my daughter's suffering and torment. She desperately needs salvation and Jesus' love. She hates God and me. No, she hates herself. That's God and you are just an excuse. She hates herself, but tonight we're going to fight for this girl. It's called Sherry. Saudi Arabia. Pray for my salvation and my nation of Islam. I am married twice and have children. 
Rashid, we're going to pray for you tonight for your salvation. Pray, open your heart, my friend, open your heart and let Jesus Christ come in. You don't have to understand it all, but just acknowledge that you have sinned against God. You've done wrong. God calls it sin. Open your heart. Let Jesus Christ forgive you and come into your life and be your God. New Jersey, Warden, New Jersey. Pray for my friend's 13-year-old daughter who's beginning to cut herself. No, we're not, we're not going to let this happen. We're going to stand up and believe God for this. Staten Island, pray for my nephew, 17 years old, smokes marijuana, gives his parents much grief. Pray for his deliverance and salvation, that Jesus would touch his life. Michigan, pray for my brother-in-law, salvation. He takes other women on vacation and leaves his family at home. Ontario, Canada, my husband is sexually abusing my two little girls. May God make an escape route. Lord, help this family. These children, God, help them tonight, Father. We believe for this in Jesus' name. God, we're going to fight for these children tonight. Enough is enough. We're going to fight for this Father, that he would see his way as being wrong and repent and turn to God. Long Island, New York, I received divorce papers last week on our fourth anniversary. I'm praying for reconciliation. Only God can bring down the walls of Jericho. Newfoundland, Canada. I'm praying, we're praying for water. My son and I have been without water for five weeks and we're praying for provision to fix our well and for our dad to come home. Westwood, New Jersey, my wife filed for divorce, gave me the papers, I signed them. I pray God's will be done. I pray for reconciliation. United States for healing of HIV, depression, high blood pressure and other health issues and for peace. New York, I've not seen my oldest daughter since 1974. Her father took her to Canada, and I'm told she has no memory of me. I've been seeking her for 40 years. I expect to hear a praise report about this one. Ithaca, New York. God, deliver me from a long-time eating disorder. I feel hopeless. But you heal impossible cases. Heal the roots and damage done so I can glorify you. Vancouver, Canada. A young lady called Jennifer. I deal with depression, anger, anxiety and suicidal thoughts. I am too ashamed to come to Jesus. I am hopeless. Jesus save me. Jennifer, listen. Jesus loves you. He is not ashamed of you. It's only you that are ashamed of yourself. The Bible tells us that he is willing to give you beauty for ashes. He will give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that's on you. He will give you a song. He will restore your virtue to you. Jesus is not ashamed of you. He died for you, Jennifer. Open your heart to him tonight and give your life to him. And he's going to make a singer out of you. I see something. He's going to make a singer out of you in the house of God. (laughs) Praise God. Let's stand together. And folks, our prayer has to be tonight. Sun, stand still. And moon, stay right where you are. In other words, enough of the hopelessness, enough of the warfare, enough of the destruction. We're going to stand and we're going to believe God for miracle after 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 miracle. miracle. We're going to believe God to do what only he can do in this nation. And he's going to do it so powerfully that there's going to be no debate anymore about who God is. That question is going to be answered. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I want you to form circles of four and five, please, if you will, right now, and begin to pray for all of these things as God has put them on your heart. All of the woundings, all of the bruises, all the impossible situations, begin to pray now that the Lord Jesus Christ would come and give us the victory. Elder David O'Neill, please, if you would come. And lead us in prayer this evening. The microphone is over there beside my chair. Let's believe God. Take authority. Fight. Fight. Those online, fight. Fight for what is yours in Christ. Don't go down into silence. Command these things to let their hold go. Command darkness to let your children go. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, O oh God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Glorious Jesus. Glorious Jesus. Glorious Jesus. Glorious Jesus. Glorious Jesus. Glorious Jesus. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Your name is faithful. Your name is faithful. Your name is faithful. Hallelujah. You cannot fail. You cannot fail. Great and mighty God. Nothing too difficult for you. Is there anything too difficult for you? Nothing. Nothing is impossible for our God. Nothing is impossible for our God. Hallelujah. No marriage that you cannot save. No disease that you cannot heal. No depression that you cannot dispel. No child that you cannot bring back home. God, enough is enough. We declare to the sun, to the moon, to the abuse, to the heartache, to the pain. Dear God, enough is enough. Dear God, you are the God who tells the ocean and the waves you can come this far and no further. Dear God, you are the God who speaks to the waves and to the winds. You are the God who created the universe, who put chaos, dear God, out of its place, dear God, and brought order into a world that didn't exist. Father, we thank you for this. You are the God who speaks the world into order. You speak the world into motion. Dear God, you're the one who speaks life into the midst of darkness. God, you speak healing in the midst of pain and suffering. You are the God who restores the homes, dear God. You restore the broken heart. You wound, you, you bound, you bind the wounded in the heart, dear God. You heal the broken hearted. Father, we thank you for this. You deliver the captives, Father. You break every chain in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, there is no other name. No other name. No other name, dear God, worthy of praise, worthy of honor. You are God. There is none like you. God, you are God. You are God. You are God. You are God. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the testimonies. We thank you for what you're about to do. We thank you for what you're doing right now, for the chains that are falling down, for the prison doors that are flying off their hinges. We thank you, God, for bodies that are being healed. We thank you for minds that are being restored. We thank you for hearts that are being tenderized. Oh, God, hearts that were hard as stone. You are giving them a heart of flesh. Oh, God, thank you for love being poured out into the hearts of those, dear God, who have lost compassion. They've lost passion for their spouses. God, you're restoring. You're restoring, dear God. We thank you for this. Oh, glory to your name, oh God. Glory to your name. Thank you that children are going to be able to say that my daddy and my mommy were through, but you brought them together again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the testimony, even of lawyers who have helped sign these papers, dear God, of divorces. They are going to be receiving a testimony that these papers are no longer dear God going to stand but God you're going to bring these marriages together again God heal and forgive and restore dear God Father we pray for those who have been abused in body abused verbally abused sexually we pray dear God that you would heal their hearts heal their hearts like the testimony we heard of Pastor Patrick you would put forgiveness in their hearts forgiveness dear God restore homes God you are the God of the impossible you are the same yet yesterday, today, and forever. That which you did in the days of old, you are doing today, God. Open up the Red Sea. Stop the sun. Stop the moon. Do whatever you have to do. Defy the laws that you have placed, dear God, and rewrite the law. Rewrite the law. That which the enemy thought he had, dear God, we pray you release the grip of the enemy off the minds of your children. God, restore these homes. Restore these hearts, dear God. Heal them, dear God, to the uttermost. Invade the homes tonight invade the homes invade dear God even where we have put up barriers even when we have put up resistance and arguments and questions in our mind dear God let every argument fall down the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds bring down every argument bring down every stronghold and invade every home for the glory of your name for the glory of your name we pray in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Glory to your holy name, O God. Glory to your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah for victory, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for victory. Thank you, God, for chains falling to the floor. Thank you, God Almighty, for strength and healing. Thank you for restoration and victory, oh God. Oh God, we give you praise and glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless your holy name, oh God. Bless your holy name, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for victory. Thank you for freedom. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you for a shout of glory throughout the whole world. A shout of glory. Thank you, God, for victory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Bring glory to your name, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Glory. Glory, 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 get up and thank God, get up and thank God, get up and thank God, thank you Lord, thank you God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Praise God. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let's believe God. Let's believe him tonight. Praise God. You want to sing. I know you want to sing tonight. And I want to encourage those that are at home. God has been good to you tonight. So it's time to close your blinds. Stand up from behind your laptop. And sing and shout with us and dance. And take your freedom by faith. Take your freedom by faith tonight. Take it by faith. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. I want to thank all of those that have joined us online to pray tonight from all over the world. We do thank God for you. And may I encourage you to find some friends and bring them to this prayer meeting wherever you are next week on your laptop, your computer, whatever it is that you have, bring them to this prayer meeting with you and let's believe God. Find people who really need a touch from heaven and bring them to the prayer meeting with you. And we're going to believe God for miracles. Fast with us if you can. That means you go without solid food from Monday night, Eastern time at midnight to at the end of this meeting on Tuesday night. Now only fast if the if you're able to do so. And if you're not sure, you should seek medical counsel on that. But most people who are reasonably healthy can go without solid food for that period of time. Jesus said himself, a, young, a man came to him who had a son that was being dragged about in the flood and fire and thrown on the ground and destroyed by darkness. And he said to his disciples after he had healed him, this kind does not come out but by prayer and fasting. And we are fasting, we are praying, and we're believing for an incredible breakthrough in this generation. 
I want to thank you with all my heart for being with us tonight. Thank God. Can we turn the camera? We're going to turn the camera around. And from New York City, there's 1,800 of us tonight saying goodbye. God bless you. We'll see you next week.